My name is Loretta Hooley and I'm the principal here at Marici College and Marici is a Catholic secondary girls school with 900 students aged from year 7 through to year 12. We are very fortunate here. We have a beautiful greenhouse where we do all of our seedlings and um, propagation of seeds and plants. We have an amazing market garden and kitchen garden and so that actually supplies food for our um, canteen and restaurant. Marici has a strong focus on sustainability and we also had the, uh, the situation that the content that we teach to the Year Nines in Semester 1 of Science was physics. And so those two things came together in my head and I thought perhaps we could do something to do with solar photovoltaics. We began in the science classes by introducing the girls to the idea of uh, solar panels and how they work and we covered some physics and some chemistry curriculum in doing that. At the same time, maths were covering some sort of arithmetic revision and some surface area and volume type calculations. And then we brought all of that together in their first assessment task, which was a combined math science assessment task, where they had to choose an audience and then produce a proposal for that audience where they were going to power something using solar panels. I priced the solar panels for a whole small town and that was very definitely challenging, different forms of maths and we had to design a rack to hold a solar panel at different angles and we had to do five different ones and it was in both maths and science so we would carry it through the math from the maths then we would look at the science aspect. Well maths can help you in science and science can help you in maths like with trigonometry you can work out like the angle and stuff that you need for a solar panel to produce as much power as possible when being exposed to a light source. We were reacting to what was needed rather than planning and introducing a subject. We would get to a stage where they needed to know a particular way of solving something and that would be one of the drivers about what we were teaching. So something like uh, yeah, like a sine curve for, for the shadow. Um, we had to get into Excel and we had to talk about radians because the spreadsheet doesn't use degrees. Uh, so we had to, had to explain how radians work, which is not something they usually encounter until year 11, but they were quite comfortable with uh, different ways to talk about angles. The girls then moved into an assessment task where they had to design a series of racks which would hold the uh, solar panels at fixed angles and these would then be used later on in a science investigation uh, and they also as part of this um, assessment task they also investigated how the shadow angle of a solar panel is affected by its tilt angle. All that knowledge was then brought together in science when they considered why it is that the tilt angle affects the power and so we were able to bring the maths and the science together really nicely in that way. Uh, we had the plan that we, the racks designed by the students as part of this investigation using trigonometry would then be printed using our 3D printer, which would have been uh, a beautiful way in which to bring in an extra piece of technology. Unfortunately, uh, the piece of technology failed us for this particular part of the project, so we had to go low-tech uh, building the racks, but that would be something that we would like to uh, incorporate and improve next time around. The goal of the IT part of the STEM Connections project was to produce robots that could help with the efficiency of solar cells, so to find sunny spots and to point solar cells in the right direction to improve their efficiency. Robots are less abstract in what you're trying to make them do. You're not just moving data around inside a computer, you're trying to make them do something physical. That I think that kind of concreteness and less abstractness helps. In my example, where they were programming robots, uh, they made use of coding, they uh, put their responses into the blog, uh, they uploaded the coding, they explained the coding, and then I would leave a comment as to whether uh, it was correct or they had to make other improvements for that. And then when it came report writing time to fill out a rubric, I could just open all the blog entries get an idea, look at it holistically, and then make my comments accordingly. Well, a lot of people in the class, I didn't really know that well, and we just kind of didn't really talk to each other, interact with each other. But the STEM project like, made us, like, we were put into groups with them, and like, we'd be working with them and sharing ideas and opinions. We'd be solving problems together, and we'd like, get to know each other, and so it was really good. We have uh, about eight classes in our Year 9, and we chose two of those classes and we timetabled them so that all of the students who had chosen IT as an elective were in these two classes. 
uh, and then we filled up the numbers randomly so that we had two mixed ability classes and uh, we organised them so that the same girls were in maths and science together. One of the collaborations that we had in this project was with Professor Susan Howitt from the ANU School of Biology who uh, part of her research is now in science education and she looks at how students learn to do research and how they understand research. When students go into a lab they're very focused on what they're doing in the lab and what results they get from their experiments and so they tend to see the outcomes totally in terms of success of the experiments. So if the experiment works they think that's fine. If it doesn't work they feel it's been a failure and so they don't think about what they've learnt but actually they've learnt a lot from the process of failing through troubleshooting, having to repeat something, having to rethink an experiment and what the treasure questions do is try and focus student thinking a bit more on that process of learning. When we were improving the experiments we'd look at the previous ones and if there was like a flaw in the data or graph we would go over it and check what we'd done and like change the equipment if necessary. Some of the things that went wrong in the project included these solar panels melting under the intense heat of the floodlights because the floodlights were too hot for the little, little solar cells. So in order to fix that we had to make sure that we took the measurements we needed very fast and turned off the light as soon as we could. One of the most interesting things that's come out of it is that the responses from the Year 9 students aren't all that different from university students. I mean, in some respects they are, but in others they're not. And so when you go into a research project like this where you don't know the answer to start with, the experience is common no matter when you do it. And it's, so it's things like time management and getting on with other people, um, making a plan in advance, you know, making sure that you achieve stuff on time. All of those things are quite challenging when you say to a student, it's now your responsibility to do this, regardless of whether they're year nine or third year university. And so I think that's been really quite interesting. I think it was really valuable for the girls to see us as teachers have to struggle with the same problems that they would. It was amusing, definitely, to seeing teacher not knowing what exactly was happening as well. But it also helped us because it put us in a situation where someone couldn't immediately help us, so we'd have to figure it out for ourselves with the help of the teacher and the teacher would have to learn stuff as well, which is also always a good thing for us to be teaching the teacher as well as the teacher helping us. The project that they were going through really did have genuine elements of research in it. It wasn't all predetermined. It wasn't that we had uh, fully formed it beforehand and were just kind of presenting it to them as a, as a fait accompli. We were working through the difficulties with them at the same time. And I think that made it more authentic.